Our guest is Pastor Tim Garino from the Rescue Mission. Tim, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for having me on, and thank you so much. And uh, Hey, just a shout-out yesterday to the Martinsburg Rotary Club that did that big free uh, pancake breakfast mm, and stuff yeah. in the War Memorial yesterday. I didn't get a chance to go, but uh, I heard a lot of people showed up, and they, they do a wonderful job every year out there. They do. They, a lot of folks, and, and God bless them. But today, thank you for having me on. I wanted to share with you our Give a Smile matching gift campaign. And I even got it written down so I actually say the right stuff this time. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> but uh, just real quick, I, I'm, real, I'm real excited about this. Uh, the matching gift campaign for the Give a Smile Foundation, Dr. Lisa and Buzz Poland are willing to match up to $10,000 to establish a fund at the Eastern Western Virginia Community Foundation that will help our program guests here at the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission for years to come. What a great opportunity to make a difference in transforming lives in a meaningful way. This will help us start the fund with a sizable amount to get relief to, to the many who need dental work here at the mission. Matt, you ask, what is Give a Smile Fund campaign? What is Give a Smile Fund campaign? There you go. Right on cue. <laughs> wow. It's a way to make a financial <laughs> gift and donate to help give a beautiful smile to one of our folks who attend many of our programs here at the Martinsburg Union Res Rescue Mission. Can you drink water and make Matt talk at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that was very intuitive of Matt. I mean, he was right on top. That's yeah. good. For children, for women, for the men, all who Biden our programs and all the different programs. And it, it's very important. I, I know Matt works with Lenny, and um, we it took us several years to help Lenny get teeth. Mm. And he, uh, many folks that come into the mission, they come in with abscesses, a lot of stuff. We had a gentleman a couple of years ago during COVID, he came and uh, he, we were working on his teeth, had several abscesses. He moved back home to be with his mom because his mom got COVID. He ended up dying at home from an abscess. Mm -hmm. um, so we deal with uh, men, women, and children. And um, Dr. Lisa and Buzz Poland were introduced to me by um, Joseph Bowers, their neighbor. We met together. I was explaining to him what we were doing. Uh, this thing started with um, Jenny Byler from um, Tomahawk Presbyterian Church. She came to me, and we had these little boxes that we stick everywhere to raise money. And then as I was sharing with Dr. Lisa and, and Buzz Poland uh, at Joseph's house about what we were doing, they said, hey, we want to do a matching gift campaign. And this is awesome because the funds that we can use then, because it costs a lot of money, dental. Dental is just huge. And you know, if you get a toothache, if you chip your tooth or something like that, I mean, that's huge. Mm -hmm. um, imagine walking in for many of our people, men, women, and children, they haven't had dental care in years. They walk in, teeth are rotted, abscesses, all kinds of stuff, and they have to function normal. And mm -hmm. so right now, we, in fact, two week, the last two weeks, we've helped six m men get um, teeth, pulled and taken out because of um, uh, abscess and you can see the difference because they come in there it, it's tough it, they're miserable mm -hmm. and then we get the teeth pulled and we get the abscesses taken care of and then we start working towards um, getting them better dental care and stuff like that dr. Lisa also opened up the door for some dentists for us um, so we can get our, our folks in right away and get those teeth pulled because they have, first have to go on medication antibiotics to get the swelling down and then they go in and pull the teeth out it's a process, and I'll tell you what, it's huge because um, it makes all the difference in the world and in, in, in their attitude and their day-to-day -day living. Kids especially, um, and also the women, we've been able to help uh, uh, and are starting to help even more And this uh, Give a Smile campaign. So if you can go online to the Martinsburg Union Rescue Mission, hit the Donate button, 5 10 15 Your $10 donation turns to 20 Your $5 donation turns to 10 We'd like to get this all collected by the end of the summer. And, and get that money into the uh, Eastern West Virginia Community Foundation. Um, Susan Caperton, who's taken over for Mike Walton, she helped sign all this up and get it going. She's a wonderful lady. Of course, the foundation's wonderful. They've done some great work here in, in this town, to continue to do great work in this town in many different organizations. So we're just blessed, and I wanted to share this because it is the summer. It's a big need, um, you know, for – I know um, – as a kid growing up, I, we were poor. I, my teeth were bad, and I got them all taken care of in the Navy when I went in the Navy. I still have fillings that go back 40 years. Um, I remember when I went in, the, the dentist looked at me and said, wow, we're going to be on, you, on your mouth for about a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, growing up poor, growing up, I mean, those kind of things your parents don't have money for. 
And I mean, it's very expensive. If you're handling dental work, it's not cheap. Mm -hmm. And you do insurance, so you know what I'm talking about. It's not cheap at all. Yeah. And, and insurance doesn't cover that much of it either. Exactly. So, I mean, we know. And, and imagine having four or five abscesses in your mouth going on at the same time. And um, it makes a difference. And we're just so thankful um, to the Polans for doing this and um, for the folks putting this together. Um, Jenny puts out these boxes. Uh, Jenny Beidler goes out every – we raised about – 3,000, we're about 7,000 short of our goal of 10,000 right now and uh, through these uh, boxes and donations. So we'd like to hit the 10,000 mark to match this camp, uh, to match this donation and get this money in there and that money will start building. And it'll be a foundation for years to come. And it's exciting because um, there is nothing like this out there other than um, uh, I know that Dr. Lisa, for many years, did did stuff in the schools for WVU. She did it for many decades for the kids in in, in the elementary schools and stuff and the high schools. She gave us a lot of information. I can't go through all the information. I can't remember. I have it written down. My case managers used it, but she opened up the door for us in huge dental health uh, stuff. And, and and you know what, Lenny? I mean, it made a difference for Lenny when when Lenny came to us. It was bad. His mouth was bad. His teeth were bad. Now he smiles. He has mm -hmm. teeth. He's happy. He doesn't have the headaches anymore. Doesn't have the swelling in his face. It makes the difference. And I mean, and then women, especially with the women, we get a lot of women. Uh, I mean, it makes a difference between somebody smiling and having a good attitude or not smiling and feeling miserable all day. Now the question. Sure. You told me what the Give a Smile campaign is. Yes, sir. How do I give? How do you give? You go online, the Marsburg Union Rescue Mission and you can hit the do, uh, donate button and there's give a smile box hit that and then do that you can write a check and in the memo line put give a smile all right you're a good man and and you or you contact sharon or me we'll give you one of the little boxes you can put money in or you can go straight to the eastern western virginia community foundation and write a check to the give a smile uh, fun and put it in the memo line you can send it directly to uh, them susan caperton and them and they'll take the check and put it right in that account so we're all set. We're, I mean, we just got to start giving today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, you know, and it's, it's just. For those of you just tuning in, Tim and Matt will be doing their show at the Apollo <laughs> Friday, two shows Saturday, and a matinee Sunday, half price. It's, 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 all proceeds I, will benefit. Yeah, the they, give, they give a smile campaign. They give, they give a smile foundation. There you go. And, and you know, and, it, and it's so important because uh, it's, it's just, it, it's something that, and we all need our mouth. We all need our, our and it, it's, it makes a huge difference. I, I've seen a lot of things over the years. Um, don't want to describe them. But, um, you know, when you have bad teeth, you have that bad situation, it makes all the difference on how you um, are perceived and also how you behave sometimes. And your own self-confidence. Yeah, right. thank you. You're afraid and, to smile. Yeah, and especially for the women and, and the children, it makes a difference. I mean, guys too, not saying we're, you know, a lot of guys are, are, are vain, so that meant that, you know. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, save on the send the emails to Rob. <laughs> R Mario at yeah. Talk Radio WNR dot com. Yeah. But but it, it's you know there's so much going on at the mission. We uh, also this summer our numbers have gone up. The last month our numbers have gone up in feeding. So just so you think we get a break in the summertime. Actually we get more people coming to the mission in the summer. We have more people staying at the mission in the summer. Um, because of the location we're at, transit, the transient population moves around. When the winter breaks, they come and they move around more. Um, so we actually, our numbers go up in the summertime um, because when winter hits, cold weather, wherever they're at, they stay still, you know. So if they're in certain states or certain places, they stay still. And because we're in the panhandle, we get a lot of, you know, uh, traffic because we're not far from other places. So our numbers go up. Uh, we have a lot of men staying with us. I think we're about 116 every night. Um, our, um, our, our Haven House, the transitional family, uh, is full. Um, the women's shelter is full. And then um, the men's shelter, I think we're at 70-something. I can't remember. So we're about housing about every night, about 115, 116 people. And we're feeding, housing, clothing, doing all that every night. So we're busy in the summertime. We really don't get a break. A lot of people think, oh, you get a break. And, that, and then plus, school's closed. Um, so we get more uh, attendance in the sense of our evening meals and our weekend meals and our holiday meals. More people come to us to be fed. 
uh, on the weekends and the holidays and stuff like that. So it really, our numbers go up in the summertime when you think they'd go down. So, um, you know, if you can hit that donation button, help us out with our meals, that would, that is huge. Do you have other fundraisers going on at the same time as this one, or is this the only one? Now? This is the only one at the moment that, that we have going on is the Give a Smile campaign. You met your goals on the other ones? Oh, yeah. We met our goals on the other ones. Everything's been going great. It's just um, our day-to-day, you know, taking care of the food and the housing and, and the regular supplies. Um, we put that in Facebook, like if we need towels or, or paper towels or, or toilet paper, all that stuff's on Facebook, and people come through, and it, they're just they're wonderful. Have you had some large money donors, Tim, or have most of these been small donations? Uh, most of it's been small donations. Because you've and, had some pretty lofty fundraising goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and we, met, we met every one of them. And that's the neat thing about the mission is that everybody participates from all backgrounds, from all everything, um, and, and, they, and they meet. They meet our goals. They meet the, for, you know, and it's just, I, these guys have been there. It's like, I invite people to come to the mission to see us. We're very transparent. You see what we do every day. You get to meet the people. Um, there's a lot that goes on at the mission. Pe- when people come and take a tour, I had a chance to uh, tour Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel from the Air Force the other day, came through the mission, Air Guard, and uh, um, he, Ron Faith is his name, chaplain there. And he just, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's amazed. He, he loved it. He got to see all the people. Some of them even knew uh, as he walked through and saw it and gave, we gave him a tour of everything. They're going to they're, they're gonna try to bring a group of guys and gals out to do some work uh, at the mission, a day serving. Uh, we got a whole bunch of people coming in the summertime. They bring their groups. They bring their businesses. We set them up. We do all kinds of stuff. And the people are amazed when they come and see the activity and how busy it is and, and all the mm-hmm. stuff that's going on. Can I speak to that? Because I went through, you, you took me and Michelle through, yeah. and holy moly, you yeah. have, I mean, the, the spirit there, yeah. Yeah. the the energy, the positive energy. I mean, it, it's almost like, I don't want to say a factory, mm-hmm. but it's like everybody is, everybody's doing something. Everybody mm-hmm. is contributing. Everybody yeah. is, and you can tell they're all moving. They're yeah. all moving. There, there's energy. There's there's positive. I, 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 I was, I mean, I was amazed. I mean, the, yeah. the positive energy, the way everybody is, it's a community, the community you've built and how everybody feels lifted mm-hmm. up and everybody feels a part. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, that's all we want to do. We all want to feel like we're a part of something. Yeah. And it's like that. Every, I mean, we deal with people coming in off the street for the first time and they walk through the doors for the first time. And it's very hard because, um, you know, for a lot of people, the rescue mission is the bottom of the barrel. And, um, that's because it's perceived and when they come through the doors it's very humiliating and so when they come through the door we have to train our guys every day to, to, to talk to them as anybody else would want to be talked to to lift them up encourage them you know it can be a negative environment um, but we try to change that and you know we don't announce when people are coming through we just give tours or people groups show up our, our I mean we have so many people coming through that door every day that I mean, we don't say, okay, be on your best behavior today. So and so is coming through. The no, door. I mean, when we came yeah. in, you're just like, hey, you want to walk around? You want to take a tour? We're like, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just it's just that way. And so, but we do do training every day. We have discipleship track training every day. Um, we we work with the guys. A lot of our guys. Um, it, it's 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 tough. And the, the ladies and uh, we just hired one of the um, moms who's in our uh, family transitional housing. She got hired just recently. Uh, she has four kids. Um, she's a mom of four kids that stays at the um, Haven House. She was working jobs on the outside, and we we she's been with us now six months to where we know her, and now we hired her full time as one of our shelter attendants. That saves on her um, uh, on her um, babysitting, whatever you call it, child care, daycare, daycare. I mean, she was almost working to pay her daycare, and you know it was so much, and so now she gets to work inside the building that she's in with the kids. She gets to save money. And that way we'll be able to get ahead. I mean, so we hire from within. When we have open positions, we hire from within. We have some, uh, right now two shelter positions open up in Berkeley Springs for the women's shelter. We have one of the ladies up there that already hired on staff. So we try to do from within to give them a step up, you know, and, and then a step out. Go ahead, Matt. How many positions do you have? You know, when you talk about hiring, a lot of people may not think that that the mission has a yeah. lot of quote unquote employees. I think we have eleven total right now, okay. and then with the two that are open, so it'd be a total of thirteen employees. And you see how much we run, mm-hmm. uh, you know, thirteen paid employees, and that's and because I, the biggest cost in, in any nonprofit is your staffing. Mm-hmm. So we try to 
cap the staffing so we can the money goes to the people mm -hmm. i think they we were rated recently and there, and, and there was like we're like a 95 96 percent you know what do you say 95 cents or 96 cents of your dollar goes to the people Okay. Four cents goes to administration. I guess what they call it like that. Well, and a lot of your yeah. administration, like you said, you're hiring from within. Yeah. You're hiring mm -hmm. people who are. Yeah. Are you're helping them get back on their feet? So. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, especially like I've dropped clothing off and mm -hmm. stuff, and your guys out there. Yep. I mean, they are a well-oiled machine. Yeah. I mean, they're everybody's got their spot. Everybody knows what they're doing. Yeah. And who, who could possibly fit in Bodwell's clothes? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got guys, I'll tell you what, we got people come in size 14 shoes, all this stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it's amazing the stuff. We, we get all kinds of sizes. I mean, it's amazing. So we all we take all the clothes, men, women, children, all shoes. We take it all. I, I thought mean, you were going to say, like, you just make two pants out of the pants. <laughs> <bottle drops out. laughs> no, you, we, we get guys sometimes taller than him. My, be, uh, my shorts. Short. My shorts are long pants <laughs> yeah, for, for a lot of people. <laughs> Rob Martin. Rob Mario included. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, what's but, your what's your inseam, John? Uh, somewhere between thirty six, maybe a little bit more. Well, that's not terrible. No, yeah. that's not that much longer than the average human. But being. Then you've got yeah. the thirty seven, thirty eight inch arms. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, yeah it's it's. I mean, I it's tough for me to find clothes. It's like we yeah. you walk by a uh, like a place that just has regular clothes or a, a gift shop or something. It's like I can't go in there because yeah. they don't have extra longs. Yeah. There's, there's nothing for me unless I want to wear a belly shirt. Nobody wants to look at my <laughs> belly. Holy crap! Give me another pop tart and some Oreos. <laughs> but but it, it, it's it's a, it's a neat thing that how we have a community like that and and it all helps out as these as the men women move forward onto jobs. Uh, we have uh, one or two women up at the Berkeley. Springs Hope House uh, shelter up there that they're working full time outside the Hope House, uh, the Haven House. All the people staying there have jobs, um, and then of course the men. Uh, quite a few. I forget how many so far this year. I think we got over fifty, almost sixty men full time jobs outside the rescue mission this year so far. So there's, a, I mean, it's always something that happened, and and, and we're we're busy. Uh, but this dental thing is key because for a lot of these guys, um, the jobs they have, they don't have insurance and stuff so we're able to help them out um like i said dr lisa and buzz really helped us out in that opened up a lot of doors for us to get uh to help the dental health that these folks need and it, it makes a difference it makes a huge difference so you're 30 percent of your way to your goal 30 yes. percent of the way there right now you're mm -hmm. three thousand you need 10. yeah so we need we need somebody to step up and our uh, our many to step up and help us out get that goal uh, of ten thousand dollars, and we like I said from f your five dollar turns into ten dollars every dollar is double it's matched so up to ten thousand so we're excited I believe we're going to get it we um uh, the the this community has always been behind us stepped up behind us a great community mm -hmm. we thank God for this community and thank God for all the help that they give us. Um, we're just we're blessed, and you know now that the streets are closed around us, um, the city yeah. closed the streets. You can't get there us. from here, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> we kind of open up the signs a little bigger, and and you know for people we're open. So by the way, just so you know, we're open. We're not closed. You just got to come through the signs, and uh, it's it says thorough traffic, not traffic to the mission. <laughs> uh, we took a hit. We took a hit. We we financially took a hit from this, and we're so we're we're praying that you know the Lord will cover it all. When does but, that reopen? You know. Uh, um, it's, uh, wow. I have no idea. I didn't even know they were going to close until the day I showed up. And then I was told it was on Facebook. Um, but I don't spend a whole lot of time on whatever Facebook. Whatever the date is, whatever the date is, you add months on top of that because yeah. construction always takes longer yeah. than people yeah. think it yeah. will. It was kind of cool though yesterday, yeah. being a holiday, all the yeah. kids riding bikes, you yeah. know, right out in front of the mission was really cool. Yeah. How, how yeah. is the uh, housing uh, project across the street from you going to affect the mission in, in any way at all? Oh, no. No, in fact, it's going to uh, better us. I mean, I, I think, I think it's making it better I, i'm excited for it um i've met with uh mr uh, tom dickey i met him I met him with him a couple times um the guy that oversees the whole thing and um owner of it um i i i think it's great i i've met with uh mayor Knowles about it a couple times i think it's i think it's awesome and and the gentleman that used to own the building he comes in all the time and talks to me i, I i'm so excited i'm glad it's getting done i'm because there was a lot of issues when it was empty um, I'm excited. I'm excited for the city. Um, we, we keep our side clean. We, we police our side. Uh, I'm, I'm excited for what's going to go on over there. More customers for our thrift store. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited. And uh, uh, I do know some people who have already rented 
uh, they're in the process of uh, getting in there, right. renting and stuff like that. Um, I'm I'm excited um, that that's all coming together, and uh, I wish we could have more stuff like that. As Corey said, Cor- you know, Corey Roman uh, prior to coming on, and Corey's been a, a good friend of ours and um, just a good man all all around. Um, so I, I'm excited. I, I think that's one of the neatest things that's going to happen. I wish there'd be more because there's a lot of older buildings in their city. Mm-hmm. I know Diego down the street, the Garage King. I know he's bought a lot of old buildings and he's trying to refurbish a lot of them. Um, I, 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 that's what we need. We need more stuff like that. I mean, we just did a 1.5 million building, you know, our, our the Haven House and the Network Cross Street, and then our main rescue mission, the brick building, that was almost like three million dollars. I mean. We're we're bringing up the neighborhood. We're not bringing the neighborhood down. No, so, yeah. you're definitely not bringing the neighborhood yeah. down. So I mean, you know, I'm all for that kind of stuff. I think I think it's awesome. How long had that building sat vacant? Oh, at least five decades, at least. Yeah, yeah that, I think it was vacant when I started here in January of 1990. Yeah, it's been it's been, yeah, it's been vacant been for closed a long in the time. 70s. Mm-hmm. That's what I was told. Early 70s. That's what I was told. It was closed in the 70s. Yeah. And then they've tried little things here and there. Yeah. Have been in there, but. Mm-hmm. No, it's, I mean, I, I think that is, that was the key. That was the key. No matter what was done in downtown Martinsburg until something happened there, yeah. we were not going to see the kind of boom. Yeah. And, and now we are. And the parking and everything, they're going to have parking that makes a difference. You know, so I, I'm excited. Um, I, I, I support what the city's doing. Um, the police department has been very good to us. They help us out in a lot of ways. Um, sometimes we have people that want to loiter and stuff. They come right away and move them on. Um you know, we I have um, we have I I'm like Corey was saying I I love the city of Martinsburg I love what goes on there uh, everybody's cooperative everybody works together um, we do a lot of projects downtown Martinsburg um, so there's we're 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 on board with it I'm excited yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm a city person because I I grew up <clears throat> near a city yeah and either I think you're kind of either a city person or you're not and if you are a city person. You're just kind of used to what happens in cities. Yeah. There's a certain vibe a city has, and there's mm-hmm. certain stuff you deal with in a city. One of those is always hearing a siren. Yeah. And after you've been around mm-hmm. it for a while, you don't hear them anymore. Yeah. Like that line <laughs> of the Blues Brothers when they check into that little <laughs> little run, that little room that they have. And how often does that train go by? Often enough that you won't notice it. <laughs> you never notice it. Yeah. I, yeah. I got I to gotta say one thing about downtown Martinsburg is you get people who live out in the county say, oh, I don't want to go to Martinsburg. It's dangerous. There is nothing dangerous about the city of Martinsburg. Mm-hmm. It is it is so well policed, so well taken care of yeah. that I mean it, it people more people need to spend more time in downtown Martinsburg visiting the rescue missions, wonderful thrift shop, visiting yeah. all the stores, visiting the restaurants. I mean the, the city is growing, the city is booming. And it's been a it's been a good few years for Martinsburg. Tim, yeah. we're just about out of time. If you could, thirty seconds, tell everybody how they can donate to your sure. Again. Give a smile foundation. Go online, hit the donate button, give a smile. You write in your check in the memo line, give a smile donation today. God bless you guys and thank you so much for having us on. Tim, thanks for coming in. Always great to see you. Thank you. Good to see you, Tim. Nine oh two.